the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, a very warm welcome again, uh, and a warm welcome to India. Uh, you know, you have a long trip here in India, and uh, everybody is really looking forward to knowing more about this visit. Uh, there's a lot of common things between the two countries because, you know, we are large democracies, we are multicultural societies, and of course, Canada is a home for many people from Indian origin. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, there's business, there's trade ties, and so on. Uh, but I think we should start by actually telling the audience why are we late here today? Because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I look to this audience of uh, business leaders, which uh, is obviously, therefore, mostly men. Uh, and I point out that I spent uh, the last hour and a half, uh, which uh, was only scheduled for an hour, but hour and a half, uh, speaking with extraordinary business leaders uh, who happen to be women, uh, and uh, sharing their stories and listening to the uh, great ideas they had to bring forward, uh, everything from uh, bring your mother-in-law to work day uh, to, uh, no, as, as a way of uh, encouraging daughters-in-laws to be more respected in the workplace uh, and at the home when they return from the workplace, uh, to, uh, to dream gaps, to a broad range of things. It was uh, an extraordinarily important moment to recognize uh, that there is much work to be done on uh, gender equality and gender parity and opportunities for women uh, in business. Canada, as you know, has uh, done a lot on, uh, on gender parity in my cabinet, and we're putting forward lots of, uh, uh, lots of initiatives about uh, supporting women in business. Uh, but we're doing so recognizing that Canada actually has a larger uh, wage disparity between men and women than uh, many other countries, including the United States. So we have a lot of work to do, uh, and we're very conscious of that. Similarly, uh, India, with I think only 26 or 27 percent uh, women in the workplace, uh, uh, or women participation in, in, uh, in the workforce, uh, is one of the lowest in the world. Uh, and it's something that there needs to be a lot of work done on. So I was very, very pleased to really dig into it. And if I came out with any real concrete recommendation, it's that uh, business leaders across the spectrum here in India and uh, around the world uh, should take the time to listen to uh, the challenges and the barriers faced by the women who are successful in their organizations to know how to do a better job of empowering more women. Because getting women to be more successful in our businesses is not just uh, a nice thing to do or a good thing to do. It's a smart thing to do. It leads to more economic success and it leads to better impacts on not just uh, your workforce and your business, uh, but on the community that you serve. So that's why I was late. It was a very good reason, but I'm very glad to be here with you all now. Yes, and of course, what I told our women colleagues there was that another reason why we were late was because we were supposed to talk only for an hour. But here, there was one man who listened to us patiently for more than one and a half hours. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, you spent this morning actually also meeting a lot of business leaders. Uh, you know, you would have heard from them as what even our Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, that India is reforming to transform and that there are a lot of business opportunities here. So, uh, you know, what, what is your feedback about your meetings with these business leaders? Well, first of all, it was a very exciting uh, morning of, of meeting, as you say, with a, a broad range of business leaders and talking about the tremendous connections between Canada uh, and India, whether it's in uh, natural resources or in uh, the tech sector, in IT, uh, in creativity, in uh, biotech and pharmaceuticals. There are huge uh, compatibilities and complementarities between uh, India and Canada, so much so that uh, coming out of the meetings this morning and uh, a few other meetings that we've had, uh, we're able to announce today uh, over 5,000 new jobs in Canada uh, and uh, over a billion dollars of investment in Canada. Uh, of course, at the yeah, it's, uh, 
But of course, on the other side of things, we also talked an awful lot about Canadian companies investing in India in partnerships here, uh, in our pension funds and uh, investors being extremely active in all the amazing things going on here in India. So uh, this was really a win-win morning, a win-win day for all of us. Uh, and I'm excited about the, 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 the opportunities uh, in the Canada-India friendship, which as you said, like any friendship between two countries is much more than just political, although it's very good on the political side, is also people-to-people -people ties, is also cultural, uh, economic and business. Uh, there's so many different ways we can engage and uh, uh, for all that I'm spending a week here, I could spend three weeks and still not be, uh, be uh, connecting enough with all the different things going on. Yes, as you said, uh, you know, the business opportunities actually can be immense because just to uh, put the perspective again, I think India is also going through a huge amount of structural reforms, whether it's in the form of formalization of the economy, bringing in more transparency, the bankruptcy code, the GST and so on. So those are the big structural reforms uh, backed by a lot of changes in the financial system itself in terms of deepening of the bond markets and so on. Uh, also backed by the huge opportunities which are run from the fact that India is a young country, so the demographic opportunities, but also all the infrastructure spends that would take place in the country, including a wide range like affordable housing and so on. And then the focus of the government on ease of doing business. So uh, it's opportunities, business to business. It's also a lot of opportunities for the large Canadian funds that exist because for them, they can pick to participate in projects which are either new or which are under implementation or also which are completed and in a way offer a kind of set of annuity returns. So the trade that we talk of between the two countries, which is maybe $8 billion plus $2 billion, I think in a way pales into insignificance if you, as you spoke about the US-Canada movement of almost $2 billion a day. So I think if the two countries get together and focus, there's a lot more that, that we can do. Well, I think one of the things, you talk about business to business or government to government. For me, I like to think about uh, people to people, uh, entrepreneurs uh, working together, uh, employees, employers, figuring out better ways to engage, uh, and also the student connections. The fact that we have about 125,000 uh, Indian students come to Canada every year. It's uh, number two in the world as a source of, of uh, uh, foreign students in Canada, but rapidly on the way to number one. Hopefully later this year, it'll, India will be number one. And that means uh, that there are tremendous opportunities to create uh, dynamic outcomes in Canada and in India. And I think, uh, you know, for all the trade ties and business ties, if we focus on those people-to-people -people connections and friendships, uh, the familial relations, the, uh, the young people, looking to discover the world, wanting to uh, expand in, in a country like Canada where uh, we provide tremendous education, tremendous opportunities to then bring home some of that expertise and bring some Canadian uh, investments with it. Those kinds of synergies are what I am most excited about. So for me, the Canada-India friendship, as important as the Business Council is, uh, is always mostly and uh, firstly about people. Yes, indeed. I think, uh, you know, you've shown this through uh, just a few days in your, uh, into your trip as well. I mean, you you visited India here, of course, as you said, when you were 10 year old with your father. You are here now with your lovely children and your wife. And of course, in these couple of days, you visited a place of historical importance like the Sabarmati Ashram or a tourist interest like the Taj Mahal or a religious interest like the Akshadan Temple. And then, of course, you know, the, the charkha as well. So uh, who better than to talk about the people-to-people -people ties? But, uh, uh, you know, I would say that we also experience this even as we do business, as you rightly said, because it's about the employee connections. It's about as we as a bank, we, you know, open what we call the Student Connect program, that before the students go from here to attend colleges in Canada, they can actually put their fixed deposit here and everything online, you know, when they move there, the money gets transferred, paid to their college, and life becomes much simpler. So, uh, you know, uh, what, what are your thoughts about how your family is enjoying India and how are they mingling with the culture? Well, I was uh, incredibly fortunate as a, as a kid to have been brought here, as you mentioned, by my father. 
Uh, I spent a whole week here while he was working on a Commonwealth Heads of Government uh, meeting, which meant when I went down to the Taj Mahal and to see uh, Fatehpur Sikri, uh, I went alone with a bodyguard. Uh, so this time, being able to bring my kids to the Taj Mahal and see it through their eyes as well was uh, extremely important for me. But more than that, uh, being able to, to share uh, this extraordinary place where the future is being created every single day. You see the potential here, you see the activity of what's going on already, and you know that in the coming years, uh, sharing with uh, my kids and understanding myself the incredibly Im important uh, evolution that's going on right here is very, very uh, exciting. And the, the kind of thought leadership as well being uh, uh, led you know, by, by folks like you, uh, and I wanted to mention this earlier when I was talking about gender, gender parity, uh, you're launching a really amazing initiative uh, around uh, a gender pledge that you want companies to, to make uh, about highly hiring and empowering more women. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so we discussed, uh, you know, in the round table just before this about how companies can actually pledge to increase the participation of women in the entire economic activity because as the Prime Minister said, it's not just about a nice to have approach, it's actually a more economic imperative now. So, you know, we discussed about a lot of ease. We said, uh, can we encourage the girls to dream? Uh, can we educate the girls more? Because uh, you know, you educate one man, you actually educate one person, but actually you educate a woman, you tend to educate many more people in the family. Uh, and how do you empower women by creating an environment which is more enabling for them to grow? So, uh, you know, everybody around this table was so inspired with each other's stories that we said that we want to create a pledge to say that we would encourage more and more women participation in every field of activity. Uh, that we are in. Yeah. That's just wonderful, yes. Yeah. And I encourage all of you to take a look at uh, signing that pledge. It would be wonderful to have more companies do that. But you mentioned my, uh, my kids and the travel around. One of the things that I really wanted to share with them uh, is the extraordinary diversity of India. Being able to go to a, a beautiful mandir, to be able to go uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the uh, Golden Temple uh, uh, tomorrow, to be able to go to a mosque uh, later in the week, to highlight the extraordinary diversity and pluralism of India, which isn't without its challenges, but to understand that diversity of views, of background, is an incredible source of strength a source of resilience in an organization, in a community, in a country. Uh, to be able to listen to different points of view and learn from them and draw on them and not feel uh, challenged, uh, well, yes, feel challenged, but not threatened by them, I think is a sign of, of maturity in a, in a community. And certainly a, a country like India uh, you know, can and should uh, be leading the way on respect and diversity. And I think uh, highlighting this incredible diversity so my kids understand it's not just Canada uh, that is diverse, but uh, other countries around the world uh, that are working hard on it as well is a good thing. Thank you. It's because we as a country actually uh, take a lot of pride in the rich heritage that we have and the kind of diversity uh, that we have. So uh, thank you for acknowledging that and thank you for appreciating that. Uh, moving a little bit again back to business, you know, you've actually uh, expressed a lot of interesting thoughts on international trade and, uh, you know, global order for trade. So, would you want to share that, you know, what you've done with other countries and how do you perceive this? Well, we, we've seen a narrative around the world in, in, in politics and in societies, uh, particularly uh, across the Western world, where uh, there is a worry about the impacts of trade, the impacts of globalization on uh, ordinary citizens, on workers. There's an anxiety that perhaps the success that we've created hasn't been contributing to well-being of individuals, of workers, and of their families. Uh, and at a time where the world in many ways is closing off and turning away from trade, Canada is really proud that we've been signing uh, big trade agreements. We just signed a free trade agreement with, uh, with uh, the European Union uh, that is market access to uh, 500 million people and the second biggest 
uh, economy in the world if you put it all together. Uh, we just uh, are still working on NAFTA, but I can tell you it's, it's uh, doing well and we're very confident that we're going to continue uh, to enjoy uh, uh, free trade with the United States and Mexico. Uh, and we just signed on to the CPTPP, which is a block of 11 Pacific countries uh, representing also uh, a significant share of the world economy. We know that trade leads to growth, but if we're able to keep public support for trade deals in Canada. It's because we're also making very significant moves to make sure that the benefits of trade actually are shared with ordinary citizens, that small businesses get to benefit from greater uh, access to international markets, that workers uh, get opportunities, that indigenous peoples, that uh, women, uh, that marginalized communities also can benefit from these trade deals is what we need to look at as we continue to make a case for global trade. Similar things on immigration. At the time as a world is, is tending to close in and close off and worry uh, about immigration, Canada is increasing our amount of immigration and quite frankly, uh, the most common complaint uh, I get from Canadians, from Canadian businesses, from, from people in general is you're not bringing in enough uh, immigrants and, and that's, that's a rare thing in this world. Uh, we know that we can do that because we have created success and we're going to continue to contribute to that success. Uh, we've brought forward a global skill strategy that means uh, a, a company can bring in uh, top uh, talent from around the world, get a visa in less than two weeks uh, because we know that when you bring in a senior person from overseas, you're going to hire lots of local Canadian graduates and talent. So understanding that uh, openness to immigration, openness to international talent is an incredibly positive advantage uh, in the world stage uh, are all different ways that we're looking at globalization as a real opportunity. But we understand that there's an anxiety in the world that everything's changing, that AI, that automation, that, that the global supply chains are a threat to uh, the way things have been. But instead of trying to hold on to the way things were as long as we can, Canada is saying, okay, let's leap forward with confidence into this transition and get more of our young people to study in STEM areas, whether it's in universities or community colleges or trade schools. Uh, let's make sure that we're investing in AI research. Canada's leading on AI uh, research right now across the country. Uh, we're leading on uh, automation, on, on self-driving cars. There's amazing numbers of tech innovations we're doing because Canada's decided we want to be part of the future, not fighting the future. And I see a very similar approach here in India that is very, very exciting to be able to connect uh, what our two countries are doing and augment the impact that we can have in leading the entire world. Yes, so as you talk of, you know, the ability of the two countries to connect, actually when you met our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, uh, earlier, uh, you know, he had in fact said that Canada and India are made for each other. Uh, so, uh, and I've also followed Canadian media that, you know, highlights four to five specific industries where India and Canada can cooperate. So, uh, with this visit in India, uh, you know, do you, do you have some two, three very uh, specific results that you would want to see achieved? Well, I think, I think thinking about Canada more often as a place for investment, as a place to draw investment from. Our, Pension funds are uh, great partners in investment here in India. Uh, but as you look to expand in the global marketplace, uh, the Canadian workforce, the Canadian diversity, the Canadian uh, opportunities to access global markets through our free trade deals uh, are definitely there. And I think in general, if this visit can get people to reflect on the fact that we work together so well, we are the two largest democracies in the world. One by population, the other by surface area. Uh, we should be doing better things together. Uh, and to, to, to really highlight the close ties, the incredible uh, opportunities is what this trip is all about. And it's, it's not uh, you know, a trip, uh, a handshake and a photo op. We are taking our time as a Canadian delegation. I'm of course going across, but we have a broad range of ministers who are traveling to all different parts of the country to really make sure that people realize that there is a tremendous potential as of yet undeveloped uh, in the Canada-India relationship. Absolutely, we have one more thing in common that is the 
fastest growing G7 country in the world and the fastest growing large economy in the world. So I think if we can get together, actually the business ties can be much bigger uh, from where we, are, where we are today. And as I said, even in India, you know, the fact is that the demography itself is a huge dividend and offers a huge marketplace for uh, the Canadian companies. Uh, and it's not just that India is a young country. The fact is that India is going to remain young for many years to come, even as the rest of the world grows old. Uh, and the second is that... It's a neat trick. Yes. <laughs> and the second is that uh, the infrastructure investment that we need to make in India going forward is such a huge opportunity. And as I said, today we have an opportunity in even the projects that are completed, which a lot of Canadian funds are actually buying into, it's because once the projects are completed, there's a continuous demand for the products that they produce. And then there are all the new investments that would take place. So there is indeed a, a huge amount of opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, is, there, is there anything specific on any of the other industries that you would want to share? Oh, one of the things uh, that, that people often think of when you turn to Canada is you think about the natural resources. And yes, whether it's uh, wood fiber, whether it's minerals, whether it's uh, uh, energy sources, uh, Canada certainly is and will continue to be uh, a great opportunity for high quality uh, natural resources uh, you know, done responsibly, sustainably, and uh, in, in safe ways uh, and in increasingly innovative ways. And that remains. I mean, India, with the growing economy, will always have uh, a tremendous demand for, uh, for uh, reliably sourced natural resources. But to think as well about what I think our great, greatest resource is, is our people. And of course, you know, 1.3 uh, million of our people, which is a significantly large, larger proportion here in, in Canada than it is in India. Uh, we're only 36 billion. Uh, the proportion uh, of, uh, South, uh, of South Asians, or specifically Indo-Canadians, is uh, one of our great strengths. Where, where we are innovative in uh, our uh, high-tech clusters like uh, Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, areas uh, across the country where we are showing uh, that investing in education, investing in creativity, investing in the knowledge economy uh, is uh, the path of the future. We've just announced a, a, a super cluster strategy that's going to provide uh, network opportunities for uh, companies. I often hear from uh, Indian companies or foreign investors, when they come in, they're like, okay, we can, we can come, but we don't have networks to plug into. We're looking for opportunities, but we don't always know where the best opportunities are. Well, the Superclusters initiative will allow you to connect with a network of uh, academic and research institutions, uh, you know, established uh, large businesses uh, working collaboratively, uh, small businesses and startups all plugged in around a thematic area that will uh, create uh, multiplier effects on uh, innovation and economic growth. So uh, there's a lot of exciting things that we're doing in Canada and I'm just uh, uh, very hopeful that uh, more and more uh, Indian uh, investors, companies and employers uh, look at the opportunity that Canada provides. Yes, thank you. I think I can also uh, give our example about you know, the fact that we set up uh, our bank there in 2003, but it's a full service bank there. And you know, uh, again, uh, the ease of doing business that we saw there helped us grow. And of course, we've committed good amount of capital there, but it's a $7 billion uh, business there, uh, where I think we play a role both ways. Indian companies setting up businesses in Canada and the Canadian companies wanting to set up business in India. And the entire trade flow between India and Canada, uh, that's the business side. The people-to-people -people connection side, you know, as, as, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, we make life easier for students who migrate into Canada. We participate in the diaspora, uh, you know, uh, that really exists in Canada. And of course, we also participate a little bit on, you know, the disability side, the Helen Keller Institute and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, as you said, as Indian companies go there or Indian businesses go there, similarly, uh, you know, it's more than 400 Canadian companies who are already present in India, and there are a thousand more who are looking to set up business in India. 
and I think India is doing everything possible to improve that ease of doing business so that Canadian companies uh, you know would be able to actually uh, grow their businesses uh, here in India as well. So uh, I know Prime Minister we are running uh, you know short of time but uh, you know it's uh, what, what I would say is that it's, it's such a pleasure to interact with you because uh, you know the country that is India has been watching you for the last few days and I think they are they're really quite enchanted in the way you have tried to mingle uh, you know not just with the business part of India but mingle with the culture of India with you yourself and and your family and I mean uh, who who better to uh, look up to uh, you know uh, on this respect when we've seen you participate in the Indian activities in Canada as well you know the Independence Day March and and doing the Bhangra uh, so <laughs> so it's it's really uh, you know rare to come across a head of state who focuses so much on business at the same time spends so much time on uh, you know topics like women empowerment and who takes time out to actually create the people to people connection and the cultural connection well, I've I'm, I'm been very lucky that I used to be a school teacher and for me, uh, discovering the world is all about curiosity and I'm curious about uh, what leads to business success, I'm curious about what leads to personal success, I'm curious about uh, how people view the future, how they view their present, how we want to work together to get there. So I'm always asking questions and uh, trust me, there's a lot of things to ask questions about here in India and over these, uh, these past few days and the coming few days, uh, I just look forward to learning all the different ways in which uh, Canada can be a better partner to India, where India can be a better partner to Canada, uh, and that we can work together to grow together, to learn from each other, uh, and create a, a better, safer, more prosperous world for all. I think there's a, a tremendous uh, opportunity to continue to grow this uh, Canada-India relationship, and it's, a, it's a, an extraordinary pleasure for me to be able to be here and, uh, and share it with my family as well. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you.